The MSI GE63 Raider RGB 8RF is a pretty powerful gaming laptop, but higher end hardware usually means higher temperatures and throttling. So let's take a closer look at performance, see if there are any problems, and what can be done to improve gaming performance. In my configuration here, I've got the Intel i7-8750H CPU with Nvidia 1070 graphics. And that's the full 1070, no max q here. So we've got a pretty well specced gaming laptop. Thermal testing was completed with an ambient room temperature of 18 degrees celsius, so expect warmer temperatures in a warmer environment. Starting at the bottom of the graph, at idle the temperatures are a little warm, shown by the light blue bars. Even though the fan was still audible, as you'll hear soon. Moving up to the green bar, I was testing gaming by playing Watch Dogs 2, as it uses a good combination of CPU and GPU and this gave us the highest temperatures while gaming. By maxing out the fan in the yellow bar, we're able to drop down a few degrees, and by applying a minus 0.150V undervolt to the CPU, shown in orange, even with the fans at default speeds, we're seeing a nice drop in temperatures. By maxing out the fans with the same undervolt applied together, shown in the lighter red, we're seeing the coolest temperatures while gaming. The stress tests were done by running ADA64 and the Heaven benchmark at the same time, in order to attempt to fully utilise both the processor and graphics. Moving up in the graph and starting with the dark red bar, there was a combination of thermal throttling and power limit throttling on the CPU. This continued regardless of undervolting and maxing out the fan. The temperature on the CPU does drop back a little with undervolting applied, but there was still intermittent power limit throttling and thermal throttling in all CPU and GPU combined stress tests. Even in the best case, with the fans maxed out and undervolt applied together. And keep in mind, I'm testing in an 18 degrees celsius room too. These are the average clock speeds for the same temperature tests just shown. Starting down the bottom with the green bar shows the results of playing Watch Dogs 2 at stock settings. Which ran quite hot as we just saw. By maxing out the fan, the CPU clock speed rises a little as there's slightly less thermal throttling. But applying the minus 0.150V undervolt in orange made the largest difference almost getting us to the full 3.9GHz all-core turbo speed of the 8750H. Moving up into the stress test results, the clock speeds in the dark red bar are the lowest due to a combination of power limit and thermal throttling, and this didn't really change with the fans maxed out. Again, the minus 0.150V undervolt to the CPU made the largest difference, as this helped reduce the power limit throttling taking place, shown in purple and dark blue, almost getting that full 3.9GHz speed. These are the clock speeds I got while just running CPU only stress tests, without any GPU load. And power limit throttling was still taking place at stock, although no thermal throttling unless we also add on the GPU load. With the minus 0.150V undervolt applied though, we're able to reach the full 3.9GHz all core turbo speed of the i7-8750H CPU. And I'll also note that it wasn't possible to change the power limit from the 45W TDP with Intel XDU. To demonstrate how this translates into performance, I've got some Cinebench CPU benchmarks here, with the older 7th gen 7700HQ just there for comparison. We're able to improve the score by over 100 points by applying the CPU undervolt, and no real difference between either in terms of single core performance, as single core alone isn't enough to trigger power limit throttling. Here are the GPU only clock speeds while under a graphical only stress test, both at stock and with a 220MHz GPU core overclock applied. But it's worth noting that your CPU undervolting and GPU overclocking results will vary between chips based on the silicon lottery. So how does this performance boost actually translate in games? In the games tested, the exact same Windows updates, game updates, and Nvidia drivers were installed, so there shouldn't be any changes other than the CPU undervolting and graphics overclocking. The same minus 0.150V undervolt to the CPU was applied as before, along with a 220MHz GPU core overclock and 400MHz GPU memory overclock. Far Cry 5 was tested using the built-in benchmark. The average frame rates were only just slightly better, no real difference though. In fact the 1% lows were actually lower with these changes in place. CSGO was tested with the Ulytical benchmark, and no real difference was observed. The biggest change was at max settings where there was a 3% improvement to average frame rate, although 1% lows are up at all settings. There wasn't really much difference in games, with the undervolt and GPU overclock supplied. To be honest, it doesn't really seem worth bothering with in terms of increasing performance, I guess it's already fairly tapped out. 
As for the external temperatures, where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle, the body of the laptop is sitting in the mid-30s. While gaming, this increases to the high 40s towards the center and up the back. And then there's little change with the CPU and GPU stress tests running. As for the fan noise produced by the laptop, I'll let you have listened to some of these tests. At idle, it was a little louder than most other laptops with the fan still audible. While gaming and under stress test, it was about the same. Not too different from most other gaming laptops I've looked at. And then with the fan maxed out, it was fairly loud. Overall, the performance wasn't as great as I was hoping for. The 8750H almost always has these power limit throttling issues. That's definitely not something unique to this MSI laptop. However, the thermal throttling wasn't expected. Generally, MSI laptops have pretty good cooling. Thermal throttling out of the box, even with the fans maxed out and the CPU undervolted, is a bit of an issue though. However, as we've seen, this could be improved, although it wasn't removed entirely. Especially when you consider that my testing was done with an ambient room temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. So I'd expect even worse in summer. At this point, I'm not sure if there was just an issue with my unit or if this is simply how they perform. These differences in performance shown aren't hard and fast rules. There are different factors which will vary results. Primarily, the temperature you're running in, application of thermal paste, and even the specific hardware, which comes down to the silicon lottery. You may not be able to undervolt or overclock your hardware the same as me. It depends on the chip and its specific power requirements, so don't just blindly copy my settings and do some testing to find out where your stable point is for best results. While you could probably improve the temperatures by swapping out the thermal paste, that's not something I can test in a review unit. If I go ahead and remove the stock thermal paste and replace my own, I can't put the old paste back. So the next reviewer would experience something different from what you'd actually see with the product, and unknowingly report incorrect information due to what I've done. Undervolting and raising fan speed on the other hand isn't physically intrusive, and as we've seen it did improve the performance and temperatures in this particular unit, with no downside once you've got a stable undervolt. And although this helped with the temperatures and improved our CPU performance, it didn't seem to make much difference in games. Let me know how much of a performance boost you've found by undervolting your hardware, and what you thought of the improvements here. And don't forget to subscribe for the full review of the MSI GE63 Radar RGB 8RF gaming laptop, as well as future tech videos like this one.